the second in a series. This is review of calculus concepts for a student in a physics-based calculus course. Um, if you're in a calculus course, maybe this will be useful to you as well. But uh, in this video, reviewing the concept of derivative and how it uh, provides information on the slope. So we have the derivative notation, the derivative of the function f of x with respect to x. This is not a multiplication. The f does not multiply x. The d does not multiply f of x. The d here does not multiply x. It's a notation. The derivative of the function f of x with respect to x. And it's a little bit delta y over delta x, although um, it's a calculus concept with an infinitesimal uh, for the delta x, a very small delta x headed towards zero. We'll see how that uh, applies here. So one way to define the derivative would be to say that we're going to take the value of the function at x plus h, so f of x plus h, and subtract the value of the function at x, and divide, this will be delta y, and divide by delta x. That's x plus h minus h. And you can see what's going to happen here in the denominator. Um, Oh, that's, uh, that's bad, so we'll fix this right now. x plus h minus, what do you think it should be? h is wrong here. It should be x. My bad. So the delta x here, we're doing one x value is x plus h. The other x value is just x. What's going to happen in the denominator? We have a plus x and we have a minus x. We'll just get h in the denominator. If we have a linear function, f of x is 4x plus 6, how would we find the derivative? Well, we'd, I'm going to put in x plus h in replace of x. That's what we're asked to do here. So instead of the x, I'm going to put in x plus h. That's 4 times the quantity x plus h. We still have the 6. I'm going to subtract f of x. f of x is 4x plus 6. And the denominator, x plus h minus x, that leaves us with just h. Well, distribute through the 4. So I get 4x plus 4h, then the 6, and then distribute minus 1 on 4x plus 6, and we get minus 4x minus 6. And it's important that the minus sign applies to both terms. I can simplify here 4x and minus 4x. That adds to 0. And then plus 6 and minus 6. That adds to 0. So I just get 4h in the numerator divided by h. The h's cancel, and we get 4 for the value of the slope. 4 is the value of the slope, and that's not a surprise. If we compare this to y equals mx plus b, m is the slope. We've got a 1 in front of the y. A 4 is the uh, slope value. Uh, what about the general case if we just have uh, some constant a times x to the nth power. If we take the derivative of this function with respect to x, don't care what the number is for a, minus 3, plus 7, doesn't matter. The value of n is going to be some value, um, but not 0. So if we take the derivative of that, I get a. The power here comes down as a multiplying coefficient. So I get a times the power n, but now it's a multiplier. And I reduce the power of x by 1. This is taking the derivative of a, a power term. So an example of this would be, suppose my function is 7x plus 4. I want to take the derivative of this with respect to x. So the 7 continues on, that constant. The power of 4 comes down as a multiplier. And 4 minus 1 is a 3. The new power is 1 less than the original power, a 3. And I can simplify by multiplying 7 times 4, 28x cubed. The derivative of the function 7x to the fourth power with respect to x is 28x cubed. So that rule is there. What about the derivative of a constant? This would be the case of 5x to the 0. Um, What's the derivative of a constant? And if I would graph this, let's think about derivative is related to slope. So here's x and here's y. If the function is f of x 
equals 5, then the y value is always 5. So I get a horizontal line with a y value of 5. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Slope is delta y over delta x. I can choose any x that you wish, but I'd have 0 over something. If I choose 1 and 4, then the delta x would be 3. Uh, but the delta y is 0, so the slope is 0. The function of a constant is 0. The function of a constant is 0. Sorry, the derivative of a constant function is 0. The derivative of a constant function is equal to 0. OK, so remember that. So what about the derivative of a polynomial? The derivative of a polynomial. Well, we'd simply just apply the derivative operation to every term of the polynomial. So here I have the polynomial 4x to the first power plus 6. I take the derivative of the first term, 4x to the first power with respect to x. I take the derivative of 6 with respect to x. In this first situation, 4 is there, 1 was the power, and the power is reduced to 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. And here we can simplify a little bit as well. I'm not going to go into the technicals of 0 raised to the 0 power. Ask your uh, physics person about that. But in general, this is equal to a 1. In a number, 2 raised to the 0 power or 3 to the 0 power, that has a value of 1. So 4 times 1 is a 4, times another 1 is a 4. So we would have 4. And this is the slope of this linear function. Uh, the derivative connects to slope. What if we have a more complicated uh, function? The quadratic 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. Again, we take the derivative of every term. So the derivative of 2x squared with respect to x minus sign from what's in front of the 3. So a negative derivative of 3x with respect to x and derivative of 4 with respect to x. We're going to get a 2. We bring down this power as a multiplier. So 2 times 2, and then this power becomes a 1. So 2 times 2, x to the first power. The derivative here, 3 times a 1, and then x to the 0. We just get minus 3 for this term. The derivative of a constant is equal to 0. Uh, that's why this term does not appear over here. And now 2 times 2 is a 4, x to the first power. And you really don't need to write the 1 power here if it is a 1. Uh, so 4x minus 3. This is a function that tells us the value of the slope for any x value. It's going to be 4x minus 3. So we've got that here. Let's play with it a little bit. So the slope of this function, the function is 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. The derivative gives us a slope function. Slope as a function of x is equal to 4x minus 3. And if I want to know the slope at 2, I would put in 2 in replace of x. 2 times 4 is an 8, minus 3, we get a 5. And the video before this one, um, it was worked out what the slope was for this quadratic function using delta y over delta x as delta x gets smaller. And then secondly, by drawing the tangent line on the graph of this function for the case of x equals 2, at that point on the graph, draw a tangent line. Then we came up with 5. Uh, but this is the calculus method. What if we have uh, f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 4? And we want to know the slope at 1, 3, 4, and 5. Because we have the slope function, 4x minus 3, this is going to be much quicker than doing the delta y over delta x or drawing the tangent line at each point. And those are only approximate methods anyway. The derivative method gives us the exact value of the slope. It's the method you should use. The delta y over delta x and making delta x smaller method is approximate and give you a rough idea of the slope. The tangent line is an approximate method because you're working on a graph. You can't draw the graph perfectly. You can't put on the tangent line in the perfect place, etc. You can't calculate the slope of the tangent line correctly every time. So we have uh, 
make it, made use here of the uh, slope function for x minus 3. So when x is 1, the slope is 1. When x is 3, the slope is 9. When x is 4, the slope is 13. When x is 5, the slope is 17. We found this by using the slope function and just replacing the x value as we um, go along to the desired values of x. And remember, too, when x is equal to 2, uh, the slope was 5. Did that up above. So we're getting a, a trend here, starting from 1, and then 2, and then 3, 4, and 5. We can see the slope is increasing. Is that correct? Is that the expected case? Uh, I'll put back on the, uh, the graph of this quadratic that I used in a previous video. And when x is 1, we would have a tangent line that runs here. Here's the tangent line for x equals 2. For x equals 3, we'd have some tangent line here that's at a higher slope. We're getting steeper and steeper on this parabola as x increases off to the right. So yes, this is expected that we would have the slope increasing as the x value increases. The slope increases as x increases for this parabola for this particular case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, what about the uh, x value where the slope is 0? Well, we're still using the same function, so we have the same slope function. The slope at a certain value of x is equal to 4x minus 3. We want the slope to be 0, so let's put a 0 on the left side and solve for x. Going to add 3 to both sides, so we get 3 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4, we get 3 fourths is equal to x, or x is 0.75. Is it reasonable? Is the slope 0 at x of uh, 0.75? We come back here. 0.75 is this position. And if I would put a tangent line on at that position, it certainly looks like it's reasonable that the slope is 0 when x is uh, 0.75. But we found that exactly using calculus, using the slope function from the derivative of the function gives us the slope function. And then letting 0 replace slope of x, we find x is 0.75. We've determined where the uh, slope is 0. And that's, that's not an uncommon operation in physics to want to know where the uh, graph of a quadratic function has a slope value of 0. There's some uh, uh, reasons that that's of interest, but I'll let you discover that in the future. But that's all for now. Keep practicing your derivatives. Um, and again, the uh, basic concept for the derivative, I'll bring this page back, when we have a constant and then x to a power, the constant survives, the power comes down as a multiplier, and then we reduce the power by 1. And if we have a polynomial, we just apply this rule to every term in the polynomial. Keep practicing.